Adobe Audition CC adds a whole new series of enhanced multi-track features to really improve the experience of mixing, editing, and generally working in Audition as a whole. So I'm going to show you a couple of those now. So the first thing that you'll notice as we look at the interface is that there's a lot more color. And one of the things that people have been asking for for several years is the ability to color code not just your clips, but your tracks. So we now have track color coding, which again, just allows you to organize your files and your media that much more easily. You can group things together by color rather than by clip. And again, it's just a very simple way to work and visually allows you to very quickly find things when you're mixing. So if you take a look here, you can see that we have all of our various tracks colored. To adjust the color of your tracks, you can actually simply click on the little square right here, and you can adjust the track color accordingly. You can see how that's being reflected there. And when you adjust the track color, you'll see that it's changed there. Now, you may have noticed that some of my clips did not change. That's because the clips can either follow the color of the track, or they can maintain their original modified clip color as well. So if I right-click on one of these clips, and I go into Clip Group Color, you'll see that if we actually select a color for one of these, they will automatically change. However, if we choose this box here with the uh, line through it, then it will automatically follow the color that's been associated with the track itself. So again, this is just a nice way to have independent track color and clip color in case you mix and match. The other nice thing is that if your clips are assigned to follow the track color, as you move them around, they will automatically conform to that set track color, which you can see is happening here as I move the position of this clip. Now, one of the other things that people have been asking for for a while is the ability to merge clips together. So quite commonly, you might have an interview or you have several pieces of audio that essentially you've cut, but perhaps they were all uh, originally sourced from the same file. Maybe you didn't actually edit them, you just placed a cut there in anticipation of editing and then just sort of left it as two pieces. Well, again, in terms of organization, multi-track organization, this to me is very visually distracting. So now inside Audition CC, I can select multiple clips, I can choose merge those clips together, and then very quickly what you'll see is that it creates a new merged clip, and if I just zoom in here vertically, you can see that a little bit better. It actually creates a new clip that is merged together. So again, just to keep things a little bit cleaner, a little bit tighter, finessing that organization, making it easier for you to actually navigate inside the multitrack. Now, continuing on with that, when it comes time to doing things like silencing, and especially this is when you're working with interviews or dialogue, people tend to have a lot of uh, what we call glottal sounds or just those momentary, um, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And traditionally, to fix those problems, you would go into your track and you would start using envelopes and you would start to draw your envelope points and you would do this kind of a thing here. I'm not even listening to what this is, don't care at the moment. And you would do that. And that's a fine workflow. And you could add splines to this, or as we know in the design and video world, Bezier's by right clicking and adding spline curves. Um, this is a fine workflow and you can still do this. It's just a little more time consuming. Well, now in Audition CC, we actually have a feature where you can silence a particular section by making a selection, literally in one right-click operation. So let me just zoom out a little bit here, and what we're looking for is a section of the interview here. All of this footage that you're seeing is from the uh, Danny Way documentary, Waiting for Lightning. And there's a little section here where he's talking about how he had a lot of trauma in his life. And you'll see that he says he had a lot of like trauma in his life, and obviously we want to take that like out. So take a quick listen. I'm going to solo this for you. There's been a lot of like trauma in my life. Now again, I could come in here and I could set my envelope points and I could click one, drag down, click again, drag back up. Four steps to do one simple removal. Well, it's a lot easier now. I can simply select my time selection tool, select the like, right click, and choose silence selected clips and time selection, like that. Wind it back. Let's clear our time selection here. And very quickly, very cleanly, it just repairs that. And many people will say, well, but that's a very sharp, linear sort of move. You wouldn't want that. It's going to cut off too quickly. Well, actually, if you zoom in, you'll see that there is a slight 
just a very slight curve to the way that that uh, envelope has been applied. Again, you can adjust these. These are all non-destructive anyway. You haven't destructively changed the files. So it just gives you a little more flexibility. But now, as you're spot checking your dialogue, you can simply come in, make a selection, right click, silence, and you're done. You don't have to click multiple points and actually draw those curves anymore. So that's just one of those additional enhancements that really makes the whole process of working that much easier. Another highly user-requested feature was the ability to simply select all of the clips in your track at one time. So if I come up to my interview track here that we've been working on, again, I can simply double click inside of the track and instantly you'll see that all the clips are selected. Now another thing, especially if you're working with dialogue and again, doing some of those silencing operations, the ability to simply zoom in full screen to that track. So now using shift forward slash, I can automatically zoom in vertically and now, of course, I have all of my horizontal zooming capabilities. And you can see I'm just using the gesture on my magic mouse here. And this just makes it very easy and fast to very quickly zoom into the track you're working on, shift forward slash, and zoom back out. So again, a lot of flexibility there. And remember, of course, that as you're working through these tracks, you can continuously reorder them as you need. So if we're done with the interview track, sometimes I like to just simply click on the waveform icon here and move it down. So you still have all of those cool capabilities to reset and reorganize all of your tracks as you're working through them in the multi-track display. Now, another thing that people have been asking for is to change the way that we basically brought files into the multi-track. Now, if I select a whole series of clips here in my files panel, Traditionally, what would happen is, as I would drag them in, effectively, they would all come in on one track stacked in a row, like you can see here. So again, dragging them from the Files panel, everything is just stacked in sequence. And that's fine, but if I have different audio, or if I have, say, multi-track audio, and all of these things are synced properly, well, I want them to come into individual tracks. So without releasing the mouse, I can simply hold down my Alt key, and you can now see that it will automatically place those clips into individual tracks. Or if I let go of Alt, again, they just stack in sequence as they did before. So this is one of those very simple things, but it's a great time saver, especially, again, if you're working with multi-tracked audio or pre-synchronized audio that you simply want to drop into individual tracks, or if you simply want to take a bunch of footage, drop it in and start working independently without having to click and move things around. Now, one of the last things that I'll talk to you about deals with broadcast metering and loudness. And this is something which is really popular today. You've probably heard there's all kinds of things going on with broadcast loudness standards. And we're very fortunate to have the TC Electronic Loudness Radar Meter, now part of Adobe Audition CC, as well as Premiere Pro CC. So what you can see here is that inside my multi-track on my master, I actually have the radar loudness effect applied. This can actually be found under the special menu, loudness radar meter. You can also see that I have my dynamics processor set here. And we'll just mute this for a moment here. And basically what this is allowing me to do is properly monitor the loudness of my content effectively before I export that content to deliver to, uh, whether it's going to the web, to a device, to CD or DVD, or in the case of a broadcast environment, on air. And you can see if you look at the presets here, we have all the standard presets that follow um, various broadcast loudness standards. In your settings, of course, you have the ability to reference your loudness units in LUFS or LKFS, and this conforms to the BS 1770-3 standard. Now, 1770-2 effectively rendered LUFS and LKFS the same. Right? So again, you can choose how you want this thing to be, to be leveraged. You can see nice and visually how it's actually working on the audio if you have any out-of-band peaks and if it's conforming to that particular loudness standard. And very quickly, you'll know that, yes, this is now broadcast compliant and I can deliver this with confidence. So those are just some of the new and exciting new features in the enhanced multi-track in Adobe Audition CC.